This is the inside of the Compass Capiro 462. If I firstly move to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volt on just here. Once we turn this on, it will illuminate here and then give us a voltage reading of the leisure battery. Beside that we then have the switch for the water pump. The water pump needs to be on so we can get water out of the taps and fill the boiler if it has been drained down. Whenever the pump is in operation the light will illuminate. Above we have this switch here which just does the top lighting and the lighting around the skylight. We then have hitch light and awning light just here. Above we then have the control panel for the Aldi heating and hot water. So if I press the button just here we can turn the control panel on. On initial startup, it will let you know if you have main supply connected and it will give you an internal temperature of the caravan. If I now press menu, it will take us to the basic functions. So at the top here, we have the thermostat for the heating, literally plus and minus to pick whatever temperature you would like it to be inside the caravan. It will drop all the way down to five degrees for frost protection and go all the way up to 30 degrees. Next we have a picture of a shower head and this is hot water. So currently hot water off, hot water on and then hot water in boost mode. Boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other or if you just want hot water very quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating's running it will turn the heating off as it needs to use the extra power. So even though I've now set the heating at 22 degrees and turned the hot water on, the system hasn't actually fired up yet because we haven't given it a power source. So literally here we have main supply and we can run it on 1 kilowatt, 2 kilowatts or 3 kilowatts. And if we don't have main supply, we can run on the gas. If you have both power sources available to you, you can run in dual fuel and it will then get you up to temperature nice and quickly. The ACC can only be accessed by the workshop. If I now press the little picture of the cog, we will go into the settings menu and you'll see we firstly have a moon. If I now press that, this is night mode, so we can turn night mode on and off just here. We can set the temperature we would like it to be for that period. And then we can set when we would like night mode to begin, whether it is for all days of the week or just individual. And then when we would like night mode to finish. We can Invert the backlight by highlighting this one in green. So this screen will go to black and the writing will go to white. And if I highlight this one here, we can then also tell the boiler that we do not want any hot water throughout that period. This can be very handy, especially if you're wild camping, so you're not heating water, wasting the gas whilst you're asleep. Next we have a picture of a sun. And we have virtually the same again, but literally for the day mode. Prioritise is what the system prioritises in using when in that dual fuel mode. So at the moment it favours mains electricity over gas. So it will basically use both power sources, get you up to temperature and then cut the gas off and maintain on the electricity. If you were on a very low amp site, you can flip it on its head so it actually consumes more gas and less electric. Next one is literally the brightness of the screen and you can invert the backlight all the time if you want to. 
this one is not used on this particular model and then this one here is just to set the correct time and day of the week if you are going to be using night mode and the day mode. If I now arrow down the majority of these again can only be accessed by the workshop but I can highlight this one in a moment which I'll show you. Next we have this one which is called antimicrobial. If you are going to use this you need to also be using night mode as well and then what will happen is in the middle of the night the boiler will come on heat itself up rapidly to kill off any bacteria that may be in the system. We then just have the internal thermostat offset so if you don't think the temperature being displayed is quite correct you can just slightly offset it by a few degrees each way. High altitude mode just here so if you are using the caravan a thousand or more meters above sea level just pop this on to make the system run efficiently. Key beeps on and off. We can just have one delayed start and stop to the system so you could have it so the system fires up on a Monday at 7 o'clock in the morning and then turns itself back off again on say Saturday at 12 in the afternoon. Pump settings for the heating just literally leave it set to thermal. If I now arrow down we have full factory reset just here so if there is a problem you can reset it. External start you do have to have additional sim boxes added if you wanted to control it via an app. We then have language just here. Service, again more for the workshop, but it will let you know what everything is up to. And then we have installed accessories. So I can now highlight this one just here. And if I now go back, you'll see I can now access it. And this one is, is basically the load monitor. So if you know how many amps the site is that you are on, you can pick on here. So let's say we're on a 10 amp site. It now doesn't matter that I now ramp it up to 3 kilowatts because it won't pull that amount of power because the load monitor will monitor it and avoid tripping. Because it's an activated function, as you can see, it appears. And then I can alter it or turn it back off again just here. If I now come to the bench seat just here and remove the cushions and I now just lift up you can see the Aldi boiler just there you can see the gas isolation tap for it just here this is in the on position and quite frankly it can stay like that I always say if you do smell gas in the van go to the source and turn off the gas bottle to drain the boiler for either travel or winterization, it's all just done on the yellow lever just here. Before draining the boiler, always make sure that the water pump has been turned off. And then all you need to do is just lift up and it will then begin to drain all the water out of the boiler underneath the caravan at this point just here. If you are winterizing the caravan, I also suggest that you then also go around and open up all of the taps as well in the caravan because this will help release any airlocks in the system and help it drain off far more efficiently. When it comes to refilling, reclose like so, close all the taps in the caravan, fill up the aqua roll and drop in the submersible and then turn the water pump back on and it will then begin to refill the boiler. Allow it to run for a few minutes and then begin opening the taps. They'll cough and splutter as they force the air out of the system. Once the water is running freely on both hot and cold, reclose and then the system will fully reprime itself. Also in here, we just have the box for the alarm. We then also have the control board for the motor mover just here. The main 25 amp fuse off the leisure battery just here. The gas isolation tap for the fridge. 
and then if I just flap the front down just here we can see the consumer unit so at the very top just here we have the trips so we've got the three individual MCBs and then the main RCD and the test button just here so if anything is not working on mains electricity just check to see if this is tripped beneath that are the 12 volt fuses for the caravan and again if anything is not working on 12 volt just check to see if a fuse has blown the battery charger itself just sits in the back of the consumer unit just here so just make sure that it is ventilated or otherwise it will overheat underneath the other bench seat is literally storage TV points just here and then we have USB charging and main sockets as well the television aerial is just located in the locker just here. Before using the aerial make sure that the digital amplifier is turned on and that the boost is turned up as well. This aerial is also for the radio as well. To raise the mast just undo the collar just here and then just push up and then twist it to get it into the position that you require and then just lock it back into place try to avoid over tightening these collars because you do run the risk of splitting them the aerial at the moment is sitting in the horizontal position like so you can flip it to vertical for additional tuning if required just by turning the tail just here always make sure that the aerial is down for travel with the radio on and off just here on the button that says SRC this is also USB and auxiliary compatible volume control just here and then literally CD I apologise not CD on this one because obviously this one is all USB compatible and it's also as you can see full on iPod and Android by pressing the volume button in allows access into its menu and then you can then just navigate through like so clicking on anything that you want to change back button just here and then off again on the button that says SRC beside that is the microwave do make sure that contents are removed for travel this will work when the caravan is connected to main supply and it's plugged in just above up here with the microwave you do have quick start and stop just here power settings just up here very handy if you are on a slightly lower amp site wardrobe just here and this is where you will find the freestanding table and then you will also find the header tank for the Aldi heating system make sure that the fluid is between the minimum and the maximum always take your reading once the heating is up to temperature as it will expand in the tank if it does need topping up you can do this yourself behind this cover there is a cap that can be unscrewed if you are going to do this just make sure that you are using the correct Aldi top up solution Beneath the wardrobe is the Dometic fridge, on and off just here. 
at the moment it is running on main supply with a little picture of the two pin plug if I want to swap it over to gas just press the little picture of the flame on these particular fridges they will auto ignite themselves and if they fail to light it will begin to beep at you to let you know this button here works as a reset for that and it will then attempt to light again it will also beep if you're running on main supply and you have no mains connected and it will also beep on 12 volt maintain if you are not hitched up to a tow vehicle because this is the one that you have it on to keep the fridge cold whilst on the move. Temperature control just here. Removable freezer box. There are just literally clips on both sides. Washroom just here. So we have the shower cubicle just here. Do make sure that the shower screen is clipped for travel. We then have the basin just here. And then the Fetford toilet. So the bowl does swivel. Open to the cassette just here. And then push to flush just here. Level indicator just here to let you know when the cassette needs emptying. And then close back up again just here. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside, it will not come out. So if you do feel resistance, just make sure that nobody's left it open. We then have the hob. So we have the electric hot plate just here, which like the microwave will work when connected to main supply and it operates just here. And then we have all of the gas rings, so it's just push in, twist and push the igniter. We then have the grill, and then the oven. Beneath the oven you will find the gas isolation tap for it and you will also find a plug plugged in which is for the electric hot plate. Up here you will find this little device just here. This is just in case the battery in the alarm fob goes flat. This way you can disarm the alarm just by plugging in just here. 